All right. Um, our guy, Rob Farba, has been doing this all afternoon in regards to setting us up with non-conference games for whomever the team is we're talking about. And so for Georgia, it's the much ballyhooed uh, matchup with Clemson coming up in game one of 2021. There's a game against Oregon coming up here in 22. I wasn't aware of that. Uh, Clemson again, a few more seasons, Oklahoma, UCLA, Texas, Florida State, and then way down the road, Ohio State about 10 years from now, um, if that game stays in place. So there's no question Georgia's going for the, the very top rung and trying to bring in those top games to, in addition to their annual rivalry game with uh, Georgia Tech from the ACC. So I got to think Dogs fans are already amped up about a date with Clemson. Absolutely. You know, I, I think that if you look at college football this offseason, that is the talk of the town. And, and especially here in Athens and, and just down the road in Clemson, you know, these are two teams that are probably going to be top five teams in the country. You look at the two units that they're probably most excited about, Georgia obviously with the, uh, with, with the offense and the return of JT Daniels, you know, return of Zamir White, James Cook at the running back position. You bring back Jamari Salyer on the offensive line. Justin Schaefer decides to return using that extra year of eligibility that, uh, that the NCAA is allowing due to COVID. And, and then you look at the wide receivers. N none of them really had an opportunity to leave. But, you know, you look at what you bring back, and, and it's George Pickens. It's Jermaine Burton. It's You're adding a dom healthy Dominic Blaylock back into the – situation after he was very successful his freshman year uh, and, you know, unfortunately suffered an injury late in that season, re-injured his ACL uh, in preseason camp uh, this past year. You know, you, you look at the guys in that room and there's tons and tons of talent. You add in tight end threats like Darnell Washington and freshman Brock Bowers that, that they're bringing in. Georgia fans are really excited about this offense, and, and they're going to get a challenge in that first game as Clemson returns all of their starters on defense. You know, it's a unit that last time out, last time fans saw them, it, it, they didn't have their best showing against Ohio State, to say the least. But, you know, it, it's it's a unit that Brent Venables, he knows what he's doing. He's going to have that those guys ready to play, especially with all the time that you have to prepare for a season opener. Uh, you know, that is certainly going to be an exciting game in Charlotte. Yeah, there seems to be some kind of connection between Clemson and Georgia, and it goes with ACC, SEC. It goes with proximity. So those campuses are what? What would be your guess? About three hours apart? Yeah, I think it's. I, I think it's probably a little bit closer than that. Even um, I'll look that up right here. Um, Clemson to Athens is an hour and a half. It's seventy-two miles away. Wow. I did not so, realize that. Yeah, and, and and you know, I think that there's there's fans that live right in the middle there, right? You know, because Clemson is on that South Carolina uh, border, South Carolina Georgia border. Um, you know, I, I think that there's a plenty of Clemson fans that live on the Georgia side and Georgia fans that live on the South Carolina side. Um, you know, I think that there's there's tons of overlap between those two fan bases in this area, uh, and and you know, I think that like I said, there's plenty of excitement for a game that's taken place in Charlotte uh, that is three hours away uh, from Athens. See, if you don't live in that part of the country, so I'm taking myself where, where I've, I've been there, I've been to, to games in the SEC and so forth and so on, but it's been a long time. Uh, you know, if, if you're not there, you just watch the games on TV or it's just a place on a map. But to think that Clemson's been as dominant as they have been in the ACC and nationally, over the last six or seven years, and they're an hour plus away from a major SEC power. I, I can understand some of the, I don't know, uh, I guess I'm better understanding some of the, the angst, some of the trash talk that I see in the live chat from time to time about making fun of Clemson being in the ACC when, you know, they're, they're in a sense playing in SEC territory. I know it's ACC territory as well, but they're playing in the state of South Carolina. They're only a little over an hour away from the University of Georgia and playing at the level that they are and beating up on the ACC. I can see where there would be some, some contention going back and forth there. Well, and especially when you look at these two teams, they've got 64 total meetings between the two of them. 
Uh, first met in 1897, last met in 2014. You know, they, they had some great games that kicked off the season uh, in 2014 and 2013 there. Uh, you know, it's it's definitely a traditional rivalry. And I think Georgia fans and Clemson fans alike are excited to see, uh, you know, the, the rivalry renewed. You know, like, like we were pointing to uh, earlier, you know, they've got several matchups down the line. Uh, they're meeting in Charlotte. They'll also meet in Atlanta for the Chick-fil-A kickoff game a couple years down the road. And then I believe they also have a pair of home and home games. So that's that's six meetings between Georgia and Clemson uh, in the next couple of seasons. Do Georgia fans, by and large, feel like Florida just borrowed that uh, division for a year? They had the right offense. They had the right quarterback. They got the, the the game put together while Georgia was struggling at quarterback, and that turned out to be the decision. Yeah, I th- I, I definitely think that's kind of the way that Georgia fans look at this. They, they definitely, uh, you know, are, see Clemson as the biggest test next season. And then, you know, there, there's already the talk of if Georgia gets past Clemson 1-0, are they running the table and going 12-0? Uh, 